Hi everyone, it's me KP and I'm here in my studio, The Moon and the Maker, home of Rubber Moon Art Stamps. I'm super excited to be here for day number four of World Watercolor Month and it is 4th of July so I'd like to wish you a happy 4th. Um, I am starting this video over. I know a few of you um, were able to join me earlier and I was like really into it and I had already completed almost um, two little paintings but we were having some issues with the microphone and a lot of feedback so we had to switch microphones and then the the um, video ended up being split in two so we decided just to do it completely over so that I have one video to post and um, you know if you happen to catch me a second time great if not then Hopefully you already got everything from it that you could, <laughs> even though the sound was terrible. Um, and you know, if if you missed all that nonsense, then yay. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just start from the beginning and um, just pretend that I didn't already do it once today. <laughs> so I'm gonna give us a couple minutes just for people to find me here um, and uh, see if anybody can join me for a little splashing of the stamps today. I know that it is the fourth, so probably lots of you are, you know, getting ready to do things with your family or just enjoying um, the day off. Maybe you're gonna grill or maybe you're going to go see fireworks whatever you do i hope that it's safe and that you have a great time with your family and friends but i do also hope that you get to get makey i think watercolor is definitely worth celebrating so <laughs> anyway we'll go ahead and get started as you know i'm working on a three by four format i'm using cold press 300 pound watercolor paper and um, today I'm going to actually do two little samples for you here, two little pieces of art. Um, yesterday I pulled these out because these were our pieces from yesterday. This, this one um, obviously has this sort of fresh springy color palette and this one is monochromatic. They're both really done using the same technique. And I know um, I had a little bit of feedback yesterday and someone said that they're having a little trouble with the strokes for these vines and leaves. So of course I just encourage lots of practice and play and you will, you know, come up with your own ways of mark making and your own look for, for your leaves and vines. But I'm here, I'm here today to show you that you can do the same thing using rubber stamps. So, and I wanted to show you this. This was one from yesterday and I created this little piece doing the same technique again. And then I just over stamped it with one of the new Joan Hallmark stamps, gave it a little bit of a wash and look how cute that would look mounted right on there. So whether you want to layer your artwork, whether you want to make a greeting card or pop this in a little frame would be super adorable. Anyway, so here's the samples from today that we're gonna work on. Um, I am using a few different stamps, <clears throat> and I wanna address the stamps too. I did put a list um, in with all the information about World Watercolor Month. I put a list of stamps that I'm using. I do want you to know it might not be a complete comprehensive list because sometimes I, I do have a tendency to work spontaneously, so I may have pulled in some other um, stamps here and there. I'll try to let you know when that happens. Um, but for this one, we're using just two of the Elizabeth St. Hilaire stamps. We're using this wild stamp, which is sort of just like this brushy sprigs. And then we're also using her poppies stamp, okay? And then for this little one, we're using a few of the Maxi Moon Garden Mix stamps, and it's just three. We have one called Sweet Sprig, which is just a little leafy sprig. I know it's kind of hard to see, but you'll see it when I stamp it. We're using this one called Twiggy. And then we're going to use another one called Itsy Bitsy Blooms. Or Bitsy Blooms. Again, I know you can't really see these that well, but you'll see them better when I stamp them. Um, again, I just have my core watercolor squeezed out into this little palette, and I'm also using the core mini half pan set. 
All right, we're going to start with the one for Elizabeth St. Hilaire. And again, I'm just encouraging you to play this way. Um, and especially if you feel like maybe your leaves or your vines or your sprigs didn't come out exactly as you had hoped, then you can definitely find stamps that will work for this technique. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead just like I have every other day for watercolor day. And I'm going to ink, ink up my stamp using paint. And I'm just going to stamp a little bit on either side. And the sort of fun thing too is that you can sort of mix your colors right on here. So if you want to do a little darker bits, you could go in with a little bit of the darker paint. And just add a little more imagery in there. And I'm going to put just a really little bit of this pale aqua or this pale uh, teal. Stamp off a little bit and then just give a little bit of color and texture back to that background. Okay. And since this is a small piece, <clears throat> I don't want to get too busy. So now I'm going to go ahead with my poppy stamp and I'm going to go into a darker color. And I'm going to stamp a little here in the foreground of that darker. This color happens to be called marine blue. And it's one of the only colors on my palette that is not a core color. It's actually by Holbein. So there you have the beginning of your piece. Now I already have this one sort of stamped out and dry. So I'm going to work on this one. And I'm just going to go in with a clean wet brush and sort of just give a little bit of smushing just to activate some of that paint. And I don't want to do that all over. I just want to do it in selected areas because I want to leave little bits of white poking through. I'm going to put a little bit of the teal on my brush and just give some light little washes here and there. really pretty much sticking with the same colors that I used and just tapping in some color and letting it flow sort of organically. Now I'm dipping into my, my pink and I'm gonna just give it a nice wash Nice little unexpected pop of color. And finally, a little bit of fallow blue, really, really light, and pull some of that some of the blues in up at the top. And voila, it's, it's just, it's so light and airy and I love the little the little bits of white that peek through, it gives such a nice brightness to your piece. <clears throat> and of course, you could definitely do some splatters if you wanted to splatter some little unexpected color. I'm 
Maybe we'll do a little bit of yellow. And there you go, you have a piece that you could easily frame. Um, you know, you could do a larger format and actually have a, a beautiful um, sort of organic, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's not really floral, but you know, a nature scene if you wanted to do it on a larger scale or easily mount this on a card with a little saying and have a, a lovely little piece of work. And here's one I did the exact same method and technique, um, just again, on a little bit larger format. For the second piece, I just wanna show you, again, it's gonna be real similar, but we're gonna use a few different stamps. We're using the little Sweet Sprig, the little Twiggy stamp, and the little Bloom stamp from Maxi's Garden Mix. Again, same premise, we're just gonna load it up with color randomly stamp it a few times here and there. All right, and we're gonna switch colors. That was green gold, I'm gonna go in Again, really using the same color palette because I have it all just here in front of me and I love the way the colors look together. So I'm just gonna mix it up a bit. So that's with the sweet spring. Now I have my little twiggy and I can switch colors again, just doing various shades of greens. So I had a chromium green oxide and now I'm using a little sap green. All right. And the only reason I thought I would just do these two different ones for you is just to show you with just a slight change of imagery that you can get a different look. Although, of course, it'll be similar, but just by switching out the imagery, it's going to change it up just a little bit. And right now, I'm just smushing color again and you can put little marks in there make your own little mark making and get some nice passages and some nice gradients that way again i like to leave areas of white i'm not just trying to like put washes over the whole thing. That was that pale pink that I really like to sort of throw in there as a little bit of unexpected color, but I also love this lavender color. So I'm gonna use that and I love it with greens.
And, you know, I like to build up that foreground with a little bit more uh, depth of color and even oftentimes darker values right here in the front. All right, and then last but not least, I do want to go into this one. Now, the, my paper is a little bit wet, so if I stamp it with watercolor now, it will have a tendency to spread, so I either want to let it dry for a while first or look for areas that seem a little bit drier. And I'm going to paint them in. And that one seems a little strong to me, so I'm going to blot it out just a bit. And voila, well, no, that still looks like some of those areas are a little bit strong for the softness of the background. So you might want to just play with those a little bit till you get them how you like them. I can even pull it out mostly and re-stamp it if I have to. Hopefully not, though. I think I, I think I got it. And then maybe again with the splatters if you want to, because I find if you do a few little splatters, and you could also use your splatter stamp if you feel more comfortable, but it's sort of just there's a nice little touch, I think. If you get a splatter where you don't like it, of course, you can still manipulate it right out or soften some of them by blotting. But voila, isn't it so pretty? And then, of course, this, this one would be perfect for um, especially one of the new Joan Hallmark images would fit so lovely right in there, um, just the same way that I did this little this little one. So if you have any cute fairy stamps or little little garden gnome stamps or things like that, that would look adorable. But again, even just with a beautiful saying, or you could manipulate this, push it just a little bit further and have yourself a nice piece of frameable art. All right, so not bad for take three <laughs> of watercolor, World Watercolor Month, day four. Again, happy and safe 4th of July. I thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful day. And I hope that besides celebrating the 4th, that you also get to go get Mickey. <laughs> Thanks. Love you to the moon and back. Have a great day. And I'll see you tomorrow for day five. Yay. <laughs> Bye.